welcome to another Maxi Shine video. Again, we're going to be upgrading as I um, do this a lot. Well, my system seems like it's never going to be finished, but I'll do what I can to speed it up because there's always um, stuff coming out, things I want to change. Um, I'm not sure if you followed my previous videos. You can see I've added all the nice um, bits power fittings there to get rid of all the hose clamps. I mean, sorry, all the um, cable ties. I've got the GTZ water block, uh, which I had previously. This is the um, EVGA classifier. Now I'm replacing a couple of things. The CPU water block, nothing wrong with the GTZ. I thought I'd just give the EK a shot now because EK seemed to be getting pretty popular. This is the, um, there, there it is there. This is the EK Supreme 1366. Support for all types types of um, chipsets. I'm not sure if you can see there, there's two pre-drilled holes for um, little tiny LEDs, so you can light that up, which is what I'm going to be doing, hopefully. That's really nice. That's the EK Supreme water block. <coughs> um, also, I've got a couple more fittings. This is going to be going on the Northbridge which I haven't opened yet, so we'll have a quick look at that. A lot of people say they like the original heatsink on the EVGA because of the uh, glowing, glowing logo there, pulsates. But as a few people know, there is overheating issues with extremely high temperatures. So I thought we'd go water pulling. Now this looks massive. Sorry. Did not expect it to be this big. That is huge! Oh wow! Okay, I've um, just installed the long screws you get with it. You can see there. Um, you just put it through, put a couple of washers, and basically it sticks out like that, like so. Now we'll just go ahead and pop this little sucker on, which is, you can see, pre-installed with the 1366 backplate. We'll keep the Supreme scripted writing to the bottom, which is probably a good indication of where it's meant to be. Now first, before I put that on, there's a few things I need to do, which is put the springs. These little springs on. This reminds me of my old, um, uh, what's it called? Refrigerator cooling. The, um, What's it called? The Everest? No, the um, Vapo Chill. Yeah. It's been such a long time. That's basically how the Vapo Chill went on. So this is where we're at. We've put the um, bolt on, the bracket. We're pushing down the EK Supreme water block there. A lot of fingerprints. There's not much I can do. Then you have your little thumb screws. Which you then screw on and put them before we tighten anything. Put them all on and just give it an even distribution of tightness. Okay, this is now um, just bleeding out the bubbles, so letting the system run. Basically, looking for any leaks anywhere. I've had leaks before, so you quickly got to sort that out before you power up the motherboard. You just short out the green and the black wire on the 24 pin or 20 pin uh, motherboard the da motherboard plug just having a look there the block you can see that looking a little bit pink but still fine that's the die I've put through it so you can see the water running through there kind of nicely um, that red bit that I changed not sure about that maybe you can let me know on the forum if you think the uh, completely clear would have been nicer. Thinking maybe if I power it up with a cup, couple of red LEDs, probably look better. Even the CPU block needs um, a couple of red LEDs. So yeah, looking pretty sweet. Running pretty quiet. A lot better than having the um, fans. So I've removed the Dominator M cooling fans as well because they're so noisy. Cutting the perspex now, like um, 
I'll give you an example of what I'm doing. I'll show you what I'm doing. Remember, I had the um, glass panel cut out there. I backed it with um, black vinyl, and I um, used my plotter to cut out my armor suit logo. I'm just going to remove that bit, and then I'm going to cut this red perspex and put under there, and that should give it a nice UV light when you put place any kind of UV light under it, and that should come out nice. I've already done the bottom of the case, so I'm just going to cut out the last piece now. I'll use my office as a workshop, because I don't really have much of a backyard, so... Kids, you're allowed to do this when you get older. So you can use a jigsaw, um, but I don't have one at the moment. This is fine, it's not that hard to cut. I'm just taping up the bit I've already cut to minimise the vibration so it doesn't crack. So as I go along I'll just tape it up a little bit more. I'll keep the backing on it until I finish to keep a nice finish on the red. Okay, now that I've cut it, the tape. Oh, I've got a vacuum cleaner, so it's okay. That's what's left. This was bought from PC. Um, sorry, this was bought from Gamods. Twenty-six dollars Australian. Uh, after you finish, you can just remove remove the backing there. Perspect finish. Not too fussed at the quality, I've cracked it a little bit there, but mainly I want the red part down the middle just for the logo. Obviously, with a jigsaw, you get a much better finish, but that's fine for me. Here we have it, guys. Not yet powered up, but I've um, bridged the 20 pin just to get the lights going and line everything up. You can see going across to the end result. Just adding a special touch to the case. A few more LEDs at the top. I've still got to do the 140mm fan at the top. And a bit more lighting towards the rear of the case. And it should look good. And I'll go through the other side and you're going to check out my uh, cable management. Okay, just a last look at the case there, with the mod nearly completely done. Just got to get a few things um, finished off. See that nice touch to the case. So stay tuned for uh, more videos coming up with the cable management. And a little bit more hardware. So hopefully the GDX300s will come out soon. We'll get them going in tri -SLI.